Number five, indicate the most important type of intermolecular attractions in each of the following solutions. And then we have letter A. So in this case, we have to find out what type of intermolecular attractions are in the solution in figure 11.2. Now, here's the figure. And basically, we just have to know that this little beautiful orange solid is potassium dichromate. So that's K2, Cr2O7. And this is in its solid form. So that's aqueous. Uh, sorry, not aqueous. Jump the gun here. That's a solid. This is being put into this container of water. And that is H2O. And H2O is a liquid. And together, when you put that solid in there, you swirl it around, right? You have your potassium dichromate now coming in contact with the water. But the potassium dichromate is not a solid anymore. It's now in the actual solution and it would be aqueous. So K2CrO2, K2Cr2O7 would now be aqueous with the water. And together, these two components make up the solution. So now we know that we're dealing with potassium dichromate, so K2Cr2O7, in an aqueous form, because that's what's going on in the solution, and H2O, which is a liquid. Now, the easiest way to do this is just link or list out all of the intermolecular forces that these compounds have. Now, keep in mind that no matter what type of um, no matter what type of compound you have, whether it's ionic or um, ionic or covalent, they're always going to have dispersion forces. So, if there's no other forces or attractions that are going on with this, your intermolecular attraction is going to be dispersion. However, this is an ionic compound, right? Ionic means that you have a metal, which is the potassium, and you have the polyatomic uh, dichromate, Cr2O7. Now, whenever you're in aqueous, right? AQ means aqueous, which just means in water, aqua in water. You know that these two components of your ionic compound is going to split and you're going to go into your ions. In this case, the two ions are your potassium. Doesn't matter how many you have of them. When you're drawing your ions, you should always go back to your initial um, element or polyatomic and then just state the charge. So in this case, since potassium is in group one on the periodic table, it's always going to be that plus one charge and dichromate, which is Cr2O7, is a polyatomic, always gets a two minus charge. And this is both aqueous. Now, since you formed ions here, this would be part of one of your intermolecular forces. If you form an ion, this is an ion attraction, right? So let's just box that off. So if you see that you have ionic compounds, you're going to be adding an ion attraction because of the direct positives and the negatives. Now with water, there's a lot of different intermolecular forces that water has, right? Water has dispersion. It has dipole-dipole. If it's going with other H2Os, right? Um, and it has hydrogen bonding. But however, we are only talking about the um, intermolecular attraction between one of these and one of these. If we're looking at the H2O, we have to talk about it in terms of the charges because that's what's making the attraction. The potassium has a plus charge, the dichromate has a negative two charge, so they're going to be attracted by the charges. And if we just draw the Lewis structure for H2O, remember that oxygen is the more electronegative, so that has a partial negative. The dipole partial negative is this kind of funky sign with the negative, and the hydrogens are the partial positives because they're the um, less electronegative element. So when these are uh, interacting with the charges, 
opposites attract. So the negative would want to be with the positive potassium, and the positive hydrogen would want to be with the negative dichromate. And this type of attraction is called an ion because that's coming from the ionic compound. And since we're dealing with partial negative and partial positives for H2O, that's part of your dipole. So this is basically saying, how does KR2, K2CO2, <laughs> K2Cr2O7 come in contact with H2O? This is an ionic compound, so it's got the ion attractiveness. This is a covalent compound, and the one that discusses the charges is the dipole, and that's the attractiveness. So whether you want to say this as an ion-dipole attraction or an ion-dipole force, it does not matter to me. Um, either one is fine. But these are your intermolecular attractions. So that's the end for this one. I hope this uh, checks out. Let me know in the comments. Uh, talk to you soon uh, for more, um, you know, for more help. I'll be talking to you in later lessons. And I hope you're having a great day out there. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.